McMorris, and welcome to the Lillian McMorris Show. We're always here within our community to talk about programs, events, and highlight individuals that have made a difference right here in our community. And today, our entire show is dedicated to a wonderful, wonderful man, a visionary, a role model, a historian. He's an actor. He's an entertainer. He's an athlete. Um, he's a motivational speaker and, of course, as I say, our community visionary. And I'd like you to please meet Mr. Richard Steele. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you Thank for you having so me. Thank you so much for being here. Well, Lillian, you know, anything that you do, I'm always uh, very happy to be a part of it. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I was going to touch on a little bit about your story. Legendary boxing referee. <laughs> and I, and there's, a, there's a journey. How did you get there? I know you started out, weren't you, in the Olympics? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, but, you know, even before that, you know, uh, I have always tried to do something in the community, make an impact, mm -hmm. you know, even as a kid, you know, uh, I try to do things that are in my community to make it a better community, mm -hmm. community and make it a better place for not only myself but others, you right. know. Uh, so I uh, went to school in Los Angeles, California. Once I... Uh, left school, I went to the Marine Corps. Okay. So I was in the Marine Corps, and even before the Marine Corps, I had started in and out of the gym, boxing gym, a little before I went to the Marine Corps. But once I got in the Marine Corps, uh, I was really, I took up boxing as a really uh, my profession. Okay. And then where'd you go from there? Well, you know, we started out in the Marine Corps, and it just so happened I won the All Marine Corps Championship. Oh gosh! You know, uh -huh. and so I left there, and I was with uh, I met a, a young man named Ken Norton at that time, and mm -hmm. so we had won the Marine Corps Championship, and then we was trying out for the uh, 1964 Olympics. Okay. And matter of fact, that was the first time that I had came to Las Vegas. Really? Because they was held in Las Vegas, okay. yes. So we came here, young kids, you know, and I'm, boy, it was, this city was something, you know, <laughs> at, at 17. Yes. The bright lights. All the, all all. the women in the yes. lights. Huh? <laughs> so they were trying to keep us focused on boxing because mm -hmm. we was here for boxing. Right. And so, I, you know, I competed in the tryouts. Uh, I lost my second fight. Won one, lost the second. Mm -hmm. uh, then after that, you know, I went home after the Olympic trials. And uh, uh, the Olympic trials is like the top of the line in amateur boxing. Okay. So once you make it to the Olympic trials, the next thing is automatic. You turn professional. If you want to stay in the, in the game. In the game. Okay. Yeah, you turn professional, and which I did. Okay. And how was that? That was part. That's all a part of your journey. So how were how were what were you like as a fighter? Well, you know, as a fighter, you know, uh, that word impact. My daughter keeps telling me we have to make an impact. We got to make an impact. You know, and she's right because all my life that's what has really kept me going. Okay. So I made an impact as an amateur fighter. So I was asked to become a professional fighter. Mm -hmm. So Los Angeles. Uh, at the Olympic Auditorium, I fought there many a times. And uh, the crowd really loved my fighting style. Mm -hmm. You know, I was mostly of a puncher. You know, out of uh, the 16 fights, I had 12 knockouts. You know? Oh, gosh. So, uh, yeah. And the other ones, uh, I lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was a good crowd pleaser uh, fighter. And, uh, well, that's what's important because, you know, you got to hold the interest. You can't get up. I, I watch boxing, and I'm telling you, some of them are just like chasing each other around the ring, and you want to say, hit somebody. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. So I was that type of fighter. So, But like I said, you know, I always made a, a great impact uh, in whatever I try to do. And when I got, I got injured, that's the reason why I quit fighting. Okay. I got injured. My ribs broke like three times. Mm. And so the doctor said, well, you're going to have to retire. Well, I have made such an impact as a fighter. Uh, they was uh, got a phone call from the athletic commission that asked me to become a, a boxing referee. So that was in what year? That was in 1972. Wow. 1972. So I get this phone call, and I said, boxing referee, gee whiz. 
You know, I never <laughs> thought about being, being no a referee. referee right? No, I want to fight, but right. now I can't fight. Mm-hmm. So uh, I did one smart thing. The smartest, one of the smartest things I've done. Uh, I had a, a great trainer. His name, you might remember, his name was Eddie Futch. Absolutely. (laughs) Who wouldn't remember Eddie Futch? (laughs) So Mr. Futch and I and Ken Norton, we was all working together at Mm -hmm. the time, you know. And Ken Norton was going to do bigger and better things uh, as a fighter. And uh, I went to Eddie and I said, Eddie, guess what? I said, they asked me to become a referee. (laughs) And he said, you know, like Eddie was really quiet, Mm -hmm. you know, really uh, read to the point. Right. He asked me, he said, sit down. So I sit down and I said, yeah, like I thought I was in trouble, you know. Yeah, I know, sit down. Yeah, so uh, he said, do you know how important that is? I said, no. Yes, you did. I did not realize (laughs) it. It never crossed my mind. He said, you would be the second black that ever been appointed to the state of California. Mm-hmm. And I, it really didn't. It didn't resonate? It didn't? At that time. Okay. He said, you would be the second black referee that ever appointed. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, so okay. if I mess up, I'd really be bad, huh? Yeah. That so, <laughs> yeah. puts a lot of responsibility on you. It really did. But, you know, it was an honor to be asked. And then he told me, he said, you know, not only are you the second black that have ever been asked to become a referee, but it has been 25 years since the first. Oh, my. And so that's when it really hit me. I said, wow. You know, so then I said, okay. I took his advice. Uh-huh. I called the athletic commission. I said, okay, I accept the job. Okay, we're going to stop right there. We're going to take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to get into the refereeing, the traveling, various personalities that you had to deal with in, in the ring and out of the ring. Right. Because I know the death threats, I mean, you've had it oh, all. Yes. You've had it all. And I used to follow you when we would go to the fights at Caesars. And um, then traveling all over the United States Mm -hmm. you have. So we're going to talk about that. We're talking to the wonderful, and I call him a legendary Mm -hmm. boxing referee, Mr. Richard Steele. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what he did as a referee, how he got to that point we've already discussed. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back with Mr. Richard Steele. Support the Richard Steele Foundation, giving Southern Nevada youth and families the strong foundation they need to thrive. A Steele Foundation. The Lillian McMorris Show is produced by Tigo and Associates Productions. Multi-camera shoots either in our studio or on location. That's Tigo and Associates Productions. Give us a call at 702-509-7728. And welcome back. We're spending some time right here at the Heartland Mansion, which we want to continuously thank Larry Hart for being our location sponsor. But we're talking to a legend, a legend that lives right here in our community. And he has been all over the world. It's the, we're going to talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of being a referee, a boxing referee. The last uh, segment, you heard a little bit of his background story. So this time, we're, now we're going to talk a little bit about him being a referee. Welcome back, Mr. Richard Steele. Thank you. So once you got the appointment, 25 years past the first African-American being appointed as a, as a referee, um, that's a lot of responsibility was on your shoulders. What yes, were you thinking was. at the time? Well, you know, I knew that I couldn't mess up. Mm-hmm. I knew I had to do a good job, and so that's when I went into my training like I did everything else. You know, and making an impact on anything, you have to be the best. Yes. You have yes, to be do. good, mm-hmm. you know, and you got to be one that knows his job. Mm-hmm. And so I went training. I went through my training. Now, what sort of training do you go through for it to be a professional boxing referee? You know, Lillian, is is uh, like I have been in boxing f- at uh, this time for over 10 years, okay. but as a fighter. Mm-hmm. So I didn't realize how hard it was to stop being a fighter right. 
and being a referee, a person that take charge, a person that yeah. the responsibility is to uh, make sure that the rules and regulations mm -hmm. are being met. Right. So it's a lot different. You being know. on the other side of the fence. Yes. You also have to put away your personal aspect of why is he punching him like Correct. that? He should do this. Correct. He should do that. Because as a fighter, you know what should be done. Yes. And you see people doing it another way. It's like. Yeah, you get caught up, uh -huh. and that's what you can't do. You cannot do that because your uh, total job, your the total job is the safety of the fighters. Got it. So it was uh, something uh, kind of hard at first, trying to get myself to stop looking and enjoying the bout, <laughs> the bout, and, and, and actually it, take control <laughs> of the take bout. Control of the bout, mm -hmm. and so you know we went through the amateurs. I went through. Uh, the small uh, fight mm -hmm. cards, you mm -hmm. know, the four and six rounders. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had me traveling, matter of fact. Where'd in, you get to go? In California. Mm -hmm. Well, in California, I'm traveling from San Francisco to San, okay. San Diego. All down the, the state. Yes. Okay. Uh, doing all of the small shows, mm -hmm. you know. And then um, I finally got a chance to do a show at the Forum. Mr. Suleiman was there at the fight for the main event, and he took a look at me, and uh, he saw something in me, and he liked. Wonderful. And so he brought you up to that next level. Yeah. So Mr. S Jose Suleiman was the WBC president. Okay. So he said, "I will be giving you a call." I said, "Wow, that would be great." Yes. You know, uh, next the next month he called me and he said, "I have an assignment for you." Where'd you get to go? <laughs> he said, and I'm going to tell you that you got to be really sharp because you will be the first black to ever go to Germany oh, and, and referee the fight. Really? He sent me to Germany the next month. And man, I mean. You Your know, eyes still glisten when you yeah, think about that. Yes, yes, because it, not only was it an honor. But, I mean, it was a big fight, right. you know. And so I go to Germany, and I did the fight, and I travel. And um, just, you know, thank God I had traveled before. Mm -hmm. So I had done some traveling, but not that In extent. this capacity. Yes. yes. So, so I go to you're Germany. you're the man. You know, you're the referee. You're the man. I go to Germany, and uh, there's a limo to pick me up. <laughs> you know, he takes me uh to this uh, mansion wow. like we are in today. Uh -huh. We go to a mansion, and uh, I could not believe it. So the guy that was uh, promoting the fight, this is where he lived. It was oh, his okay. mansion. Okay. And so uh, I met him. His name is Mr. Zoller. Zoller. Mr. Zoller. Okay. And so we met. We shook hands and talked, and uh, he said, okay, he had the... Uh, guy that was working for him, he said, you can take him up to his room. <laughs> to my room. Well, room. you know, I was thinking I was going to a hotel. Correct. Not get to stay in a home atmosphere, a mansion. Yes. 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 But the bad part about it, this was the promoter's mansion. Right. So I didn't want to feel like I owed this guy anything, mm -hmm. you know. So I was smart enough to keep my distance, distance you know, right. and everything. So we did the fight. The fight was a big fight. It was a real and good fight. And how'd you fight. do? I did well. I did well. And he really thanked me for coming, doing it. And uh, he wrote a very good report to Mr. Suleiman very on my good. behalf. So that was kind of your first step into um, first the professional step. big fights. Yes. And uh, from there, I came back and I just started traveling all over. I know I was living in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and then I started coming to Las Vegas. So I did a couple of uh, big fights here in Las Vegas. And you smile when you say that. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> because the referees here, they got very mad. Uh-huh. When well, they that, were bringing you in or yeah. because you were African-American? No, no, that was they was bringing me in. Okay. You know, they said, well, what do we look like? You know, you have to go to California well, to bring, bring this in. guy in. Did you Did you have to face any racism? Oh, yes, yes. You know, I mean, you know, they would never really come out right. and say, but yeah. you know what the reason was. Right. You know, but, you know, I just took it for it. And so how know, did you overcome it? Just just did a good job. There you go. That's be the best the way best. to be. Be the best. Be the best. And that's what you, know. you tell our kids now, yes, too, when you I, talk. Be the best you can be, you know. Mm -hmm. make a, And that's the 
best way to make an impact right. on anyone or any situation. Which was, give us a story of your favorite fight, your favorite, like really excited you to do. Well, you know, I had uh, done some of the biggest fights in history, you know. But before I go there, I would like to say that, you know, by them uh, having so, by the officials uh, making so much of a story, a big deal out of them bringing me from Los Angeles to, to Las Vegas. Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, really got the governor involved. Governor Liss was at the time. Uh -huh. But Sig Rogic. My man. Sig Rogic stood up for me. Mm -hmm. I love and, that man. Yes, yes. He stands for equality, he, he I tell He stood up for me, and he called me, and he said, Richard, I tell you what, it would be easier if you lived here. And that's how I came to how Las you lived, Vegas. How you moved to Las Vegas. Yeah, Sig Rogers moved me here, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, then I started doing all the big fights. Then you just plummeted. You just went. Yes, just, just yeah. Gone. So, well, we're going to take a little break, and we'll come back and talk about your foundation, uh, what you did, the great stuff you did at Nevada Partners, because I was part of that, if you yes, recall. Yes, yes. Um, and just your growth. Your okay. growth, wonderful, and I'm wonderful. I'm so happy that you're with me, and I'm so happy that you're sharing your story, and I certainly do appreciate it. We're talking to Richard Steele. He is a legendary boxing referee, lives right here in our community, and is making a difference and impacting, that's a that's very important right. word, yeah. impacting the youth in our community. We're going to talk a little bit about his foundation when we return. You know your business could really benefit from a great mobile app. Being accessible on mobile devices everywhere can take you to new heights of audience interaction that will improve sales, service, and your customer's overall experience of your experience. Thankfully, we're here to help. We can help you build a beautiful mobile app and mobile website. Rely on our expertise to handle everything from start to finish affordably and professionally. Contact us for a free demo to see what an app for your business would look like. And welcome back. We're talking to our legendary boxing referee, Mr. Richard Steele. We've been talking about, uh, we went all the way back to when he first started, when he went in the Marine Corps because his mother didn't know what to do with him. Yes, uh, right. <laughs> then he started fighting. He, he, he came up through the ranks with boxing and then because of some physical situations and challenges, he could no longer box. Right. So then you were asked, invited to be a referee. That's right. In the state of California. Yes. And I there was. had not been another African American referee for 25, 25 years. 25 years. That's a big, to me, that big shoes <laughs> to fill. So we've covered all of that, and now we're a referee, and we have relocated to Las Vegas, and your world just got bigger. Just got bigger, and. The fights got bigger, you know. Okay, so um, I moved to Las Vegas, and uh, the fights uh, that I was used to fighting, I mean, refereeing in Los Angeles, now it got ten times bigger. Right. You know. And all uh, eyes were on you. And all eyes on me. And uh, thank God, but we had a great commission, mm -hmm. and uh, they did the job right. Now, thinking, speaking of commission and doing the job right, there were a couple of little stepping stones, little hurdles in your way. Can we oh, yeah. talk about the controversial decisions? Yes, we had a great fight with uh, Julio Cedra mm -hmm. Chavez and Mel Jutel. Yep, I remember that. Mel Jutel, it was a wonderful fight. I mean, this um, uh, Mel Jutel was doing a, given a, a boxing lesson. Mm -hmm. He was given a boxing lesson, but at the same time that he was given a boxing lesson, uh, Chavez was Busting him up. I mean, really 
you know, every punch was just breaking bones. And, oh, wow. I mean, he was, I mean, you know, blood all in the stomach. It was really tearing him up. He made it to the last round. Wow. To the last round and uh, got hit with a right hand, dropped him. I picked up the count. I picked up the count and I'm looking at him straight in the eyes. Mm -hmm. But he was looking at his corner people. Mm -hmm. I'm asking him, are you all right? Are you all right? He could not answer me. Mm -hmm. The fight was over. You called it. Called it. And all hell broke, broke loose. That's <laughs> right, it did. <laughs> oh my God, I said, man. And so even my wife, you know, she said, why didn't you just let him have the fight, you know? But see, you were That's looking at the, what'd you say earlier when we were talking about the, the right safety thing. of the fighter? That's the your safety responsibility. of the fighter is my first and, all, and foremost duties. Mm -hmm. The safety of the fighter. If a fighter could not answer me, I asked him twice, was he all right? He couldn't answer me. Mm -hmm. But, the, you know, there's no need in me letting the fight go any farther. Right. So I called the fight. And there was only two seconds left on the in the in the fight. Oh there was God. two seconds left in the round, and and you know I never forget. One of the announcers said, "I cannot believe this." Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of I I was watching the fight because I, and I was trying to remember the, the commentator because he's real fa real famous commentator. Yeah, and he made it. Richard Steele yeah. has just called the fight, and he yeah, made a yeah, big yeah. issue about it. Yes, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Two seconds on you for real. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you did what you felt was right to do. And and after the uh, doctors' reports, mm -hmm. after everybody, you know, it took uh, several days. Okay. I went through hell for oh, several days. I, can I mean, people imagine. calling me up. Oh, I'm calling okay. your name, you yeah, know, the I'm death gonna, threats. Yeah, and all that, you know. I told my wife, don't answer the phone, you know. But, so after about four days, now we beginning to get all of the medical reports. Okay. And the medical reports showed that he was just standing, he was a dead man standing. Wow. And one more punch could have took his life. Good Lord. And that it was two pints of blood in his stomach. And his body... His body, the reason why he couldn't answer me is that his body had dehydrated. But not only his body had dehydrated, but all the water around your brain, uh -huh. it had dehydrated. Oh my God. So that's why he couldn't answer me. He was in real bad. Right. He was so, traumatized. Yeah. His whole and body so, was. And so, like I always say, safety first. Yeah, you did it. So he came, it. came all the way around. To prove that I've done the right the thing. Because right you could have been responsible for his death had he been. Yes. Had he been hit him a couple more good times. One time, two seconds. Said, you know? Yeah. Well, we we really love you. Uh, they called you a man of steel, Richard Steele. So I kind yeah. of coined yeah. the phrase man of steel. But what you're doing now is sharing with our community. And you have the Richard Steele Foundation. Yes. Boxing, education, leadership, and community. Yes. So and it's a wonderful program. It's a wonderful program. I mean, I mean, I'm all in love with boxing again because right. I'm taking boxing, showing kids, you know, how to box, showing kids how to take care of themselves, how to, you know, make a role model out of themselves, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not only in boxing, but it leads into other things. We have a foundation. In our foundation, we have a uh, educational program yes. where we do math, we do all kind of uh, goal know, setting, goal setting, mm -hmm. achieve greatness not only in boxing in the ring but in your life. Correct, mm -hmm. and that's the main, the major model uh, of the foundation. You know, to help kids to become whatever they want to become, right. but the best. But the best, be, be the, the best, best. That you can be. Leadership in the ring. Leadership. You know, a lot of kids want to. You know, a lot of our kids have anger management yes. problems. True. And the leadership in the ring teaches them how to control themselves. Okay. How to control themselves in the ring and outside of the ring. So it's a wonderful tool. Boxing is a, is a wonderful tool to use. 
You know, everybody can't be a boxer. Correct. Everybody can learn how to manage their anger. Okay. Everybody can uh, manage to how to take care of one's body, not to drink, smoke, do alcohol, or tobacco. That's our model. That's what we every day we have our kids to say. And I heard you pull them aside and get a couple of them to get a little antsy as well oh, yes. and say a little overexcited. Yes, and you pull yeah. them aside like that role model, that father figure, and say and kind of explain. Perhaps you can handle this a different way. Right, right. And I've seen you with the young ones in the ring, and they get so mad they forget technique. Technique. And you bring them back. That's right, because that's the uh, once you know boxing is thinking. Fighting is just doing. Just doing anything. You know, and you are a yes, boxer. Yes. Um, oh, I'm going to say that we only have a couple minutes left. Uh, recipient of several community awards, which he gives back to our community. I wanted to talk a little bit about Nevada Partners because he was extremely significant in Nevada Partners when they had the boxing and right. everything there. He also was inducted into the World Boxing Hall of Fame in 2000. So we're very, very blessed to have a legendary boxing referee, Mr. Richard Steele, spend time with us right here on the Lillian McMorris Show. For more information on the Richard Steele Foundation, you can give them a call at 702-638-1308 or go to their website at richardsteelfoundation.org. That's richardsteelfoundation.org. We're going to have to close. I wish I could talk to you yeah, all day. Wonderful. It has been absolutely wonderful. We want to thank, of course, Tigo and Associates. I want to thank Paragon Gaming, the Heartland Mansion, and Venetian Sands, and let's not forget the Urban Voice for supporting the Lillian McMorris Show. We appreciate you. And we'll talk to you next time.